Welcome back to starting a private practice with your two therapists' hosts, Miranda Palmer and Kelly Higdon. Today, we're going to be diving into what step five is in starting your private practice, which is how to identify your ideal client and create a message that really brings them in and gets them excited to call and schedule with you. Let's begin. All right. I love this part of the roadmap when we are talking about all the different steps of starting, um, because this is the part that I believe clinicians excel at, because to do well in your marketing and connecting with people, you have to really know how to empathize with pain. And I think that we should be able to do that well as clinicians. I, and I think this is the part that actually scares therapists the most. Mm-hmm. It brings them the most anxiety. But if you ask them, you know, once we get over the the initial like, you know, jitters or what have you, what their favorite part of doing therapy work is, they say, oh, the client, like sitting in front of me in the office, when I see this, like we have this connection, there's this aha moment or we're talking on the phone and I can see that I can really help them like, oh, it makes my, my heart swell. Like, and that's what this step is all about. Like really good marketing is not about, um, it's not about like infomercial. It's not like being a salesperson. It's really just about connecting. Yeah. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now I'm going to admit this is a big topic. It's a big topic for, for a podcast. <laughs> um, so there's going to be pieces that we're going to dive into. Yeah. They're going to feel a little bit fast. That's okay. We want to remind you, we have free trainings for you that also come with visuals and yes. can take you actually through, like we have worksheets, free worksheets for you. Yeah. Um, so there's other options, but this is just to give you that first primer. Yeah. Um, but if you feel like you need more support there, there's more support for you. You're not in this by yourself. You're not alone. Now you're starting a private practice. Why find a niche? Why even identify a niche right now? Because we have heard over the years of, I just want to get the phone ringing and then I can niche down once I get the phone ringing. But really we find that when you know who you're talking to, you're going to get the phone ringing, not only more, but with people who are truly interested in working with you and not a bunch of calls that you're going to end up referring out. Yeah. It gets the phone ringing faster. I think the other part too, which is uh, an uncomfortable realization is that we cannot be everything to everyone. What? I know. (laughs) So I think about uh, Lauren, one of our business schoolers, that she came to us with that space of trying to be everybody to everyone, Mm -hmm. feeling a lot of um, imposter syndrome, a lot of insecurity as to what she was marketing. And so it led to a couple of things. It led to her Number one, sliding her fee all over the place because she didn't feel confident. She just wanted to get anyone in the door. And then two, what would happen is that because she wanted to do the best work possible, after each session, she was out researching all of these different things to try to make sure Mm -hmm. she could provide the best service possible. And even with that, even with her spending sometimes two to four hours per client outside of sessions, researching and planning and doing all the things to, to be a great therapist, her outcomes actually were not great. When she first started with us, she was tracking her outcomes and finding that most people didn't finish therapy and Mm -hmm. have a great experience, even though she was 100% present for them. Right. So determining your niche, how do you go about that? There's lots of different perceptions on what it means to niche in your private practice. Mm -hmm. And if you are starting, we want you to start with just one just one, don't overwhelm yourself. Mm -hmm. You may want to work with parents and kids and families and this and that. And that's awesome. You have time on your side. Let's pick one Mm -hmm. that you feel curious about, interested in, have experience with, Mm -hmm. or just energizes you. Yeah. And that there's a certain amount of like confidence in terms of being able to work with them. Yes. And know that even if you're not 100% confident, If you have this through line, if you have this little like thread of, of commonality, you're still going to have very different clients, but if there's this thread of commonality, if you spend 10 hours a week 
like working on and learning in that skill, it impacts every one of your clients instead of it just impacting one. Right. So you can get a lot more bang for your buck in terms of consultation or supervision or reading a book or implementing a new um, intervention. Mm -hmm. All these other things can have a much bigger impact. And when you pick one person to or one kind of niche, it'll help you hone in on your marketing so you're not doing all the things and you can start off with being more focused. Um, it, it really does simplify your life. And when people choose their niche, one of the things we encourage is just make sure that they exist in the world. You can be so niche down that there's not that many people in your community. Just do mm -hmm. a little Google. You know, if you're working with anxiety, you're pretty good covered there. Most, <laughs> most of our, our society has anxiety. But, you know, if you're, if you're working with, you know, um, infant loss or other things like that, just look around and see what other kind of resources are out there, there for those kind of clients. That'll inform who you market with, but also give you assurance that, hey, there's a need. Yeah. And in our, in our business school, we actually teach therapists step-by-step -step with videos on how to get software that'll tell people exactly how many people are searching for a particular location in a particular country um, for those particular niches. And that can be so beneficial. Sometimes that's even the information. If, if two people, if, if somebody is kind of back and forth between two different niches mm -hmm. and they find, oh, this is being searched and there's not a lot out there and this isn't being searched mm -hmm. and there's a lot out there. Oh, I, I think I'll, I'll go in this direction. And if you're feeling nervous to pick one, know that it's just the starting place. You can pivot and add later, but yeah. for the purpose of today, and really for you to get started. Otherwise you're gonna get stuck in analysis paralysis. Yes. Let's go with one. And if you need to write the others down so you can get to them later and take them off of your mental plate. Yes, I would much rather see someone do a new niche and write up a marketing message one per quarter or one a month than have you try to create this marketing message that speaks to everyone. everyone. And again, and we say this all the time, but if you're trying to speak to everyone, you speak to no one. Mm -hmm. um, what I like to do is imagine that you've been invited to do a talk in front of a group of people. And what if you just stood up and you said, hi, you know, my name is Miranda. I'm a therapist. I specialize. And then you just literally started <laughs> listing like a psych I, today profile yeah, like <laughs> I, I specialize in addictions and moms and dads and this and that and the other thing that's what a lot of websites look like mm -hmm. um is people just listing all these things and they say they specialize and for a lot of people you kind of go well you can't specialize in all those things like mm -hmm. there's no way so that first piece of of just imagining that you're in a room a full of these ideal clients Maybe it's a mom's group, group of new moms, or maybe it's a group of moms that have just lost their child, or maybe it is a um, group of people who've been through trauma, mm -hmm. right? What, what could you imagine saying that, where you could speak to all of them and they'd be like, oh, oh I feel seen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. I have all these other people in the room. And the fact that this human is standing up in front of me, describing what I've been going through and, and giving me some specific strategies or some options like, Oh, I feel like I walked away with something versus I just got advertised mm -hmm. at, at, right. And I think that's the piece is sometimes when we try to be really broad, we don't realize that actually is a little bit more salesy. Right. So that's something to pay attention to as you are out in the world researching, when you are afraid of being salesy, or you look at something, you're like, oh, that doesn't feel good. Ask yourself, is there an emotional connection? Am I being seen in this interaction? And usually not. That's where it feels salesy, mm -hmm. right? If we are making a true connection to the client's pain mm -hmm. and really demonstrating, not saying, hey, I understand. If I come up to Miranda and I say, hey, I understand what you're going through versus I describe what I see her going yeah. through, which is going to convey that I really understand me saying, Hey, I understand. Or, Hey, yesterday I saw you in the corner balled up crying yeah. and just not knowing what to do yes. with your work. And not that she was in the corner crying, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, yeah. that is so much more powerful. I think even in like in a relationship and with my, my partner, we're having these interactions 
And I started like having kind of an emotional space and he just looked at me. He said, it's really scary. Mm. And I just felt so freaking seen just that little space of identifying an emotion when I was kind of flooded and overwhelmed by myself versus them saying, I see, I understand. I understand. I get it. No, 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 like you don't get it. But like I, by the words I knew. So this is this first next step, right? When you identify with the niches, you start to learn what's being searched and understanding that they're actually out there and speaking to the pain. And one of our favorite strategies for speaking to pain is to write a journal, a personal journal from the client's perspective, from the night before they go and they they're searching at two in the morning or they mm-hmm. call for the therapy appointment. What does that look like? What did that day entail that drove them to be like, I need to call somebody. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm done. And it's often not, um, I, and I've seen therapists sometimes I say clients because our coaching clients, I see our coaching clients sometimes be like, you know, I'm feeling completely, um, emotionally undysregulated and overwhelmed by the, my increasing stress level of whatever. And I'm like, it's probably not that it's probably there's tear stroke, tear strict pages, whatever. There might be some profanity thrown in there. (laughs) It might be, I just don't know. I just don't know. I just don't know. I'm so lost. Like, I I don't know what to do with myself. It might have broken words in it. It might be disjointed. And honestly, that's okay. Don't at this stage, if you can just imagine yourself in that client's shoes, or even again, imagine yourself in the session with that client where they're just being in that space. I love um, doing it like I'm doing a role play mm-hmm. and like really diving into that. And it's an, I, I think it's been so funny over the years, you know, Kelly and I've written hundreds, if not thousands of marketing messages for clients. Yeah. And people will always say like, I don't understand. Like, how do you do that? I'm like, because I'm literally like role playing. And I really try to get into the the mind and heart and body of that, of that potential client and just be them for a minute. And when I do that, it's so easy to Mm -hmm. then connect. Right. And if you start with that jargon of psychology and things like that, it's very easy to move from connection to teaching and projection, which we don't want. We want demonstration of empathy and attunement through connection of the pain. So you'll have this journal and you'll just flip it from the, I feel to you feel you've been going through a lot lately. You've been feeling like you just don't know what to do. You, you find yourself saying over and over again, I'm so lost. I can't take this anymore. You know, you find yourself crying at night. You're, you're not able to get up in the morning. You know, these kinds of things paint the picture Mm -hmm. of really what they are going through. And really, when you do this well, you will get calls from clients saying, were you in my house? Were you in my head? Did you watch? Like I, tears started screaming down my face as I was reading it. Like it can be, and again, sometimes people look at this as like when you're speaking to the pain that you're doing this in a, um, like a manipulative way or that it's not kind to speak to the pain. I really believe that it's, that it's super kind to speak to the pain that most of us do not feel seen in our pain. We do not have the words for our pain and somebody really seeing that and engaging with that and then giving hope is, is where people are. Most people are not looking for therapy. There are a few, but most people are not looking for therapy out of a place of empowerment. You know, everything's going really well. And I was just thinking, I add some therapy on top of that. Like, I think I really want to invest in myself. Now, these the, these people are out there. This isn't this is a niche, um, but it's not the bulk of people. And it's a and if you're getting someone where it's like not a big deal, the odds that they're going to do it right now are probably pretty slim mm-hmm. because there's always a bunch of other things that are probably more necessary, right? Than optional therapy. So this is not, again, emotional manipulation. Mm -mm. This is demonstration of attunement through Mm -hmm. connection um, and and exploring the emotional landscape of the ideal client that you want to work with. So once you've done that, then you want to talk about what we call it claiming your brilliance. 
this is where therapists get a little shifty in their seats and like <laughs> brilliance. You know, we talk a lot in our field about what's an expert, what's a specialist. At the end of the day, there is no one like you. And the relationship that you have with your clients is unique to you. No one else can replicate it. No one else can, can be you in the chair, right? That is brilliant how you show up, how you attune. So talk about how you help in a way that connects to those pain points. How do you help them when they're crying at night and they can't seem to get up in the morning? How do you help them when their relationship has fallen apart or they just discovered an infidelity? Like, what is it that you do and how you show up? Maybe you take feedback from past clients that you've had at agency work or in other jobs that you've had. What do people say it's like to be with you in the room? Mm -hmm. You think that what you do is what everybody else is doing. I assure you it's not because Mm -hmm. there is no other Miranda. There is no other Kelly that's sitting in front of a person that's showing up the way they do. Like I show up and I use a lot of sarcasm. I use a lot of like highlighting the absurdity kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like we make fun of a lot of pain (laughs) and work together. Mm -hmm. You know, what is, what is your way of helping people and talking about that is important. It's really, and, and again, it's this space of like really owning. If you are someone like I'm a very client centered therapist, but I'm also outcomes driven Mm -hmm. in the idea of like, Hey, I really want to know what you, what you're looking for. And I want to make sure, even if the path might be windy, that we're getting to that space. And so if you're looking for someone who's going to, who's just going to say like, I just want someone to talk to every week, I'm going to feel really lost. Mm -hmm. I'm not your person. If you're just like, let's just like connect. Um, And not that there's anything wrong with that. It can be really really beneficial, but I'm going to get lost somewhere along the way. Um, and you know, that space of here it is, but I'm also not that person that's going to be like, you know, CBT, boop, 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 here it is. Here's a thousand different handouts. Um, like I'm not, and we're all different. And so I think what can happen is, especially when we have like you specialize in EMDR Mm -hmm. or other kinds of techniques, we start explaining and teaching Mm -hmm. instead of saying, I utilize brain-based, scientific brain-based kind of ways of working with you. So you don't have to talk the entire time in session. Mm -hmm. So you can walk away feeling relief just by sitting in the space with me and me walking you through a few brain exercises. Like how do we make it accessible to the person reading is really important. If you start going off on teaching how EMDR works and the process Mm -hmm. by which you like set people up and all these kinds of things, you're going to lose them. Instead, you want to talk about how you help those pain points. Mm -hmm. You can mention some of the tools, especially if there are things that are searched for. Yeah. And you can link to explanations for people who want to, like, that's what blogs are for. That's what there's a lot of, there's a lot of ways that we can be very educational. Yes. But when we're talking about the actual marketing message, I've seen people where it's like, go and do this step one, watch this video. Step two, go and do this thing. Step three, watch, read these six blogs. And you're like, I'm exhausted. I'm overwhelmed. I've been like, I'm maybe I'm suicidal. Like, like I'm in a space and you're giving me to do lists. Like, no, I just need to know, like, can you help? Yes. Like ultimately um, it's think about this. Like you're hangry. You don't want to know how the soup is made. Mm-hmm. You just want to know that there's soup. And maybe you want to know that there's gluten-free soup um, or dairy-free soup or that's gluten-free and dairy-free. Like maybe you really need to know that so that you're not sick. But I don't really want it, the recipe. Right. I just need food in front of me. I need to know how quickly it can happen. Mm-hmm. You know, like okay. that's where I'm at. Like think about it from that perspective of a hangry person. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I want to just add in a caveat that these two points, the pain and claiming your brilliance, talking about how you work and how you help need to be in your own language, your own style of talking, along with how your client talks yes. and communicates. We have, we've just recently done a training on code switching and marketing. Sometimes people, because <laughs> we're uh, coaches, they want to write a message for approval from coaches. And as two white women, we're not about that because at the end of the day, your, the language, the, the tone, every, all these nuances need to connect to your ideal client, not to appease 
the majority. Not, not to appease two coaches, not to appease your old professor, not to appease your old clinical supervisor, not to appease your colleagues the or system that, at large. the system at large, mm-hmm. right? It just needs to connect them with your client. And if they're looking going, I don't understand what that jargon is. Right. They don't even know the jargon. They're just like, I don't know what you're talking about. Right. Like that's not good and fair. And then after we, you know, you've had this connection, you've demonstrated how you can help. It's talking about the next step. Now you may think, well, obviously they should just <laughs> call me. Yes. But if you're in a state of distress, Mm-hmm. You want to make it easy, click this button to call it, and they click it and the phone starts ringing or fill out this form to book a consult, you know, whatever yeah. your process is, you want it to be bold and simple and not people searching. How do I, how do I book a consult? What do I yeah. do next? Well, the, the, we'll, we'll do things I've seen. I saw this recently where they're like, oh, click on the button to the right. Well, on our mobile websites on mobile, that button's not on the right anymore. It might be below, it might be above, like it's this crazy thing. And so we want to take all that away again, go back to this, think of the hangry, think of how Uber Eats and DoorDash and some of these other things have kind of created this ease for people to get their food. Mm-hmm. I went and I got pizza with my son last night and we have very different food things. And I have a gluten-free issue. And the idea that I can go in and order online and not have to get on the phone and be like, and I would like it to be like this <laughs> and like that, and please this and please that. Like I could just imagine how long that would take to put in the order mm-hmm. versus being able to do that electronically. So think about how you can create some ease and some like release of tension. And again, very clear. What is the next step in the process? Book your 15 minute consultation. I'll answer your questions. We'll figure out if we're a good fit. Yeah. I'll give you referrals if I were not. Yes, you exactly. Know? That, that You want to show the value of that next step, which is you're going to get help. I'm not just going to lead you on. Even if it's not with me, yeah. I'm going to help you to the next step. And I think, you know, when we're talking about messaging, largely today, we've been talking in the context of websites, but this really applies to whether you're mm-hmm. networking or what, wherever you are, mm-hmm. like, how are people going to remember you that you can, you know, how to talk to that ideal client's pain. You're really clear about what makes you unique. I think about when I first started a networking and I remember meeting, like I met one person who was like, uh, my ideal client is anyone whose check is going to clear. Did that connect with me? No, no, not really. Um, you go into a room. Sometimes there'd be 20 people and every stand up. I work with individuals, family and, and, and couples from eight to 80. I work from individuals, families and couples from eight to 80. Next person. I work with everybody from eight to 80. Next person says, I work with really angry couples. Send me your angry couples. The angrier, the better. I'm like, Whoa, done. Next person. I love working with narcissistic men send me your narcissistic man. Whoa, done. Like I can remember that. I can actually kind of remember where they were standing (laughs) in the space. Mm -hmm. Right. And like where that was now years later. And honestly, which is kind of funny, I don't remember either of those people's names, Mm -hmm. but I know that that was a niche and I would absolutely like go and Google and I would be like, wait, who was the person who Mm -hmm. really loved angry couples? I can remember that when I'm terrible with names. Mm -hmm stand out is at the end of the day, we have a saying in business school, we don't compete, we stand out. There is no competition when you are standing in your own truth, when you're able to demonstrate your your attunement. Um, There's no worry about what other people are doing because you are wholly unique and the world needs you in private practice. I do believe that. I believe there is room, there is space here to serve and to, and to really help people. And we are helping people by having our message be clear. Cause sometimes people get fearful. Well, what if somebody doesn't call me because of the message, then good. Then your message was so clear. It helped them go find the right fit for them. It yeah. saves them time and you time instead of people. Do you know how long my friends have said, like, I look at all these websites and they all look the same and I don't know how to pick. Mm. And really, if you're clear, you're making the choice easier for people and supporting them on their path. And that improves accessibility in mental health care as well. It's it's huge. And then of course, the final thing is remember that 
this marketing message does not have to be perfect. Right. It doesn't have to be everything. It's something you can hone and adjust over time. I'd rather you have an okay marketing message up on your website and that you're speaking to other people and saying, hey, here's who I help, than have you kind of like hiding and and hoping and and wishing, you know, like maybe it's going to be perfect someday by verbalizing it, by putting it out on your website and getting phone calls and hearing the questions people still have or the way that people are describing it, that can then give you room to go and edit, tweak, add a little something here, take a little something there over time to create something that really does just bring you the right clients Mm -hmm. again and again. So that sounds exciting, right? That might hurt some of your eardrums. I'm sorry, I get excited sometimes. Next time, we're going to be talking about frequently asked questions in developing your marketing message. Questions like, should I self-disclose in my marketing? Um, What if um, no one's calling me? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Does it mean my marketing message is bad? And we'll dive deeper into, I know you'll have lots more questions about, well, wait, 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 wait. Um, But I have all these great niches and I want to be able to reach all the people. So how do I do this all at once? Yes. Um, and so we'll dive into all of that. All right. We'll see you next time. Thanks again for being with us on starting a private practice podcast. If you need more resources, you can go to zinnime.com forward slash pod to connect in with over 15 hours of free training, including a free training on developing your niche and a wonderful marketing masterclass four hours completely for free. And if you would like our step-by-step amazing in-depth help, check out our business school for therapists. It's really rad. See you there.